Our operation will be one of the top five lithium producers in the world. Nevada is already the only state that produces lithium, and now it's poised to enter the world stage for the in-demand mineral, as we've learned. What's being built at Thacker Pass and how it could impact the entire country? Tops 2 News at 5 o'clock. This is 2 News, coverage you can count on. Well, you may have heard about Thacker Pass, either on our newscasts, national media, or even just around town. I'm Kristen Remington. I'm Ryan Canada. Thanks for joining us tonight. For years, the sites far north in Humboldt County has been the battleground for a fight over lithium. Well, now it's finally under construction, but that doesn't mean the battle is over. Ariana Bennett has been digging into the stories behind the mine. Ari, there's a massive lithium deposit out there but it's complicated. Yeah, that's right. Thacker Pass is home to possibly the largest lithium deposit in the world. And right now, with a major push toward electric vehicles and green tech, lithium for batteries is a hot commodity. Uh, the mining company, Lithium Americas, and two back-to-back -back presidencies have pushed for a mine at Thacker Pass. But a group of Native Americans, nearby ranchers, and environmental activists have been trying to stop it. Finally, this past March, the company cleared its final legal hurdle and that same day started construction on the mine. So I paid Thacker Pass a visit. I learned the impacts are diverse and far reaching. This week in a Two News Investigates special series, I'll bring you all the stories I gathered from the tribes to the ranchers and the neighbors, local governments, even home builders. But first, this is what I learned about the mine project itself. Way up north in Humboldt County, almost to the Oregon border, among some arresting rock formations and sagebrush-covered hills, there's a valley with a lot of lithium. Big Dermot Caldera is a really special place where a volcano erupted 16 million years ago, brought a lot of mineralization into, into, the, uh, into the environment, including lots and lots of, uh, of lithium. The mineral is abundant here. Finding it is easy. But mining it is not. It's taken us over a decade just to get to this point. More than a decade of exploration, environmental studies, permitting, and court battles. But now, Lithium Americas has broken ground. And on a breezy summer day, the company gave us a tour. So we just crossed over our water line, which is being installed today. These days, it doesn't look like much. A handful of construction crews moving dirt around setting up a water pipeline. But the Canada-based company, which also mines lithium in Argentina, estimates when it's up and running in about three years, the facility will produce 40,000 tons of lithium carbonate a year. In today's prices, that's more than $1.6 billion and a whole lot of batteries. 40,000 tons will produce roughly a million, uh, enough material for about a million cars a year. That's just phase one. Phase one will be an open pit mine maxing out at 400 feet deep with a chemical processing facility right next door. So the ore can be processed into lithium carbonate on site. The mine will have about a 200 acre footprint and should be in production around the end of 2026. They'll mine this very soft clay that in contains a lot of lithium in it. A shovel will actually scoop it out uh, without any blasting. It's that soft. But before that process can happen there, a lot of work is happening here in the Lithium Americas Technical Center in Reno, where scientists are figuring out the most efficient way to get the lithium out of the rock. Just going to be getting out a two liter cylinder. It's got some neutral slurry in it and it's been diluted with neutral brine. And we're just gonna be adding some flocculant to it and watching its behavior. Once the ore comes out of the pit at Thacker Pass, it'll be broken down and turned into a slurry kind of like this. That will get pumped to the processing center where it'll go through a leaching process using sulfuric acid. At the end of the line, this is lithium carbonate. That's the moneymaker, battery grade lithium carbonate, fresh from the Nevada desert, a place with not a whole lot of water and mining does require water. In this case, not as much water as other types of lithium mines that use brine pools. Lithium Americas is using a different system to process the ore. But to get the water it needs, the company bought a farm and the water rights that come with it. The water comes from um, water that 
today is being used in alfalfa farming. We aren't adding pumping to the Quinn River Basin. We're actually using the same water that's been used there for, uh, for, for many, many decades. Crowley says when you use these water rights for mining instead of agriculture, you're required to reserve some of it. So their operations will actually use less than 80% of the water allocated for alfalfa growing. The rest stays in the well. And he says what they do use, they plan to recapture, and reuse. Well, our water use is really, really low, and we're working so hard to keep our water use down. When it's all said and done, the lithium carbonate they produce will go to one place, General Motors. The automaker has signed on to buy the Thacker Pass product for the first 10 years to build electric vehicle batteries. And while the mine is not universally popular, the idea of a boosted domestic lithium supply is. The project has been supported by both the Trump and Biden administrations to reduce dependence on foreign minerals. We're doing this project right. We're committed to doing it right. It's essential for national security. The United States is completely dependent on foreign supply for its lithium battery needs, and we're changing that. Now, as I mentioned, the mine is not universally popular. Depending on who you ask, it could be painted as a necessary source of minerals, a much needed job creator, a desecration of sacred land or an environmental hazard. I spoke with dozens of people from all perspectives about it, and I will bring you their stories the rest of this week. For now, Kristen and Ryan, back to you. Wow, looking forward to hearing all sides. Ari, thank you. The true importance is um, not only the land, but the sacred spaces that are out there that are very important. This part of northern Nevada is rich in lithium, but it's also rich in history. And that's making for a conflict between a mining company and native tribes. Our continued investigation into Thacker Pass tops 2 News at 5 o'clock. This is 2 News, coverage you can count on. Yesterday, we told you about the major lithium project at Thacker Pass and what exactly is being built out there. Mm -hmm. I'm Ryan Kennedy. And I'm Kristen Remington. Thank you for being with us tonight. Well, the project is now under construction, as you know, after more than a decade of permitting and a whole lot of legal battles. Some are still going on. Ariana Bennett joins us now here in the studio to explain that piece of the story. And Ari, this part gets kind of complicated. Yeah, that's exactly right. Now, some of those legal battles have come from Native American tribes in Nevada hoping to stop the mine. So as part of this Two News Investigates special series, I visited their reservations and spoke with them about their concerns. Here's what they had to say. If you've seen coverage of the Thacker Pass controversy, it's probably looked something like this. A fairly straightforward demonstration of opposition from local tribes and environmentalists. But look a little deeper and you'll find the perspective from the native tribes isn't straightforward at all. A mix, it'll, it'll be a mix. For Arlo Crutcher, the chairman of the Fort McDermott Paiute Shoshone tribe, the mine is complicated. It is uh, difficult because, you know, the way I see it as myself as a, as a chairman, I consider myself sitting in the middle of the fence, you know, because I represent all the people. And the people of his tribe, the closest geographically to the Thacker Pass site, are divided. Some are visibly against it. But the tribal council isn't. In 2022, the council signed a community benefits agreement with the mining company, Lithium Americas, which agreed to build a new community and child care center on the reservation. It's a positive move because we do have a, an old Head Start building here that's not in very good shape. And the mine nearby means jobs nearby, something that this tribe desperately needs. A lot of our people are forced to, to move out, you know, because of the not having the work around here. Almost all of them, in fact. There are 2,000 members of this tribe, but only a few hundred live on the reservation. The mine, with its 300 permanent jobs, could change that. Give them the opportunity to come home, get closer to home, put in for jobs here. And have a chance to live more closely aligned to their heritage. Uh, we're kind of unique in a way, you know, to be able to preserve it, but yet still have to live in this world today. It's a common challenge for Native tribes, and one felt on the Reno Sparks Indian colony as well. But their take is a little different. 
McDermott might feel it's a great thing. Our tribe would think it's uh, not enough. Not enough benefit, and as they see it, a desecration of sacred land. Because in 1865, there was a massacre when the 1st Nevada Cavalry attacked a band of Native people in that area. We saw all the water, the creeks, and the streams. Um, that is where the Indian camps were set up. In the morning, they attacked, they attacked, the cavalry split up and attacked from both sides. They're thinking between 30, 30 and 70 Native folks ran up and around Thacker Pass. Eben says dozens of people were killed and they were never able to bury their dead. And while the massacre did not begin on the site of the current day mine, the tribe believes it ended there. Lithium Americas and federal and state agencies have searched the project site and have not found any bones or artifacts from that time. It was cleared through the National Environmental Policy Act process as not an area of archaeological significance. The tribe disagrees. It might be empty physically, but it's not empty spiritually. It's our ancestors that are still there or haven't been settled because of the violent way they were killed. The Reno Sparks Indian Colony has been fighting the mine through litigation and demonstrations. While the effort hasn't been successful, Melendez says the message is what matters. So we're not really looking at winning the um, lawsuit sometimes. I think just bringing it to the forefront for the indigenous uh, injustices. When you don't provide that avenue for Native Indigenous people to talk about those things, then this is kind of what happens is that people uprise and say, wait a minute, this is wrong, let's do this right. We're not against mining, but we are against doing things the wrong way. For Crutcher and the Fort McDermott people, though, right way or wrong way, this mine is happening. How do we deal with something that's that came into place, that's in place, that's going to be there, just like everything else in life. It forces us to, to, to make adjustments within our lifestyles. Now, Eben and Melendez say they believe the government should have done more consultation with more tribes before permitting the mine. And they're hoping to change the protocols ahead of any other prospective lithium projects. Now, I asked Lithium Americas for their take on these issues, and here's what they had to say. There's uh, an extensive cultural review that has happened here. It wasn't done by us. It was commissioned by the federal land managers as part of our, of our process to get here. If we find something that we don't expect to find as we move through our project, there are protocols uh, to, to handle those things. And so we're completely prepared for that. Now, it is worth noting that in May, Lithium America has filed for a temporary restraining order against the protesters, which was granted. Crowley says they needed to keep the protesters out of the way of construction crews for everyone's safety. Protesting's fine. We, we welcome people's input. Just do it where you can be safe. Uh, and, 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 um, and we're happy to, to hear out people's concerns. Now, the most recent legal challenge from the tribes and one rancher was just rejected by the Ninth Circuit. But many farmers and ranchers in the area around Thacker Pass still have concerns about what the project will do to their livelihoods. We'll hear their stories tomorrow. And if you'd like to see yesterday's breakdown of what exactly is being built up there, head to 2news.com. But for now, Kristen and Ryan, back to you. I would say that we are neutral to the mine. I think that most of the community would prefer to not see it go in. For one community in northern Nevada, the Thacker Pass mine isn't a distant concept. It's right in their backyard. How the lithium project will impact the small town of Oravada. Tops 2 News at 5. This is 2 News. Coverage you can count on. A few months ago, a long embattled lithium mine broke ground in northern Humboldt County. I'm Ryan Kennedy. And I'm Kristen Remington. Thank you for keeping it here with us tonight. Well, this week, we've been bringing you stories of the far-reaching impacts of that mine from the company itself and the federal government to Native people who view the land as sacred. Ariana Bennett is here now to continue this Two News Investigate special series. And Ari, you found another perspective that you really weren't expecting, right? Yeah, that's right. Unless you're an avid hunter or a 
wilderness enthusiast, you've likely never been to Orvada. It's a tiny speck on the map of the vast Nevada desert. But out of all the groups with a stake in the mine project at Thacker Pass, the people of Orvada will probably be directly impacted the most. In all the noise about the mine at Thacker Pass, there's a perspective you don't often hear. I think a lot of people think that um, once you get outside of Winnemucca, there's just not anybody there. They don't realize that there's a whole thriving community out here. Closer to the mine site than Winnemucca or McDermott, you have the tiny town of Orvada, Home to just a few hundred people, it's the last stop to get gas or food before turning off of Highway 95 and heading into the Nevada wilderness to Thacker Pass. Most families are farmers or ranchers here, some going back generations. And when the mine started to become a reality... We formed our group, the Thacker Pass Concerned Citizens, to be able to directly speak to the mine. We have a lot of concerns about water quality, quantity, air quality, uh, just general noise. And traffic. The road to Thacker Pass goes straight through Oravada. You guys stay here. And right past Gene Williams' farm. They're going to have a lot more construction. There's going to be a lot more traffic. There's going to be people that don't live here or understand farm machinery. Oh, hold on, then. Williams uses Kings River Road to move heavy farming equipment. She's been pushing to have signs put up warning all the new drivers to watch out. And not just for machinery. This soon-to-be busy road is just a few feet from Oravada's elementary school. It's a safety risk that prompted Lithium Americas to offer to pay for a new one in a new place. It's going to change the face of the town. My husband calls it, you know, the carrot for people to comply with the mine um, and to be happy that they're coming. A lot of our people that live out here have gone to that school for generations. So it's a, it's a little bittersweet. It wouldn't have been an opportunity that we had otherwise, but when Lithium Nevada offered to do that, we accepted it. But not all the residents have accepted it. For Edward Bartell, stopping the mine has been worth launching several lawsuits. This is not a small scale thing, this is an environmental nightmare. And they're of course trying to portray it as green energy and it's, we see it as absolutely awful. Bartell is concerned about pollution and water use and how it could impact his neighboring ranch land. We can't uh, pollute our way to a cleaner planet and I think that's what we're trying to do with this mine. So far, his lawsuits have not been successful. The Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals dismissed the most recent one in mid-July, upholding a ruling that the BLM did follow federal law in its permitting of the mine, including studies on the water, wildlife, and cultural impacts. Bartel is not alone in his concerns, but many do see some benefit. The additional traffic also means more customers for Oravada businesses. There's the new school building, and while the locals say the additional jobs don't benefit them since they have more than enough work running their farms and ranches, the additional county tax money will. We are in a state of acceptance about it. You know, we're moving forward with what we have to do to minimize the impacts for our community. Thacker Pass is an important place to a lot of the people that live out here. And we're almost in a, a bit of a mourning phase while we are watching it change. There are exciting opportunities to be had, but you know, also it's, it's hard to watch. Now, while Oravada is definitely the closest town to the mine site, it is not the one that will get hit with the most new residents. When the mine is in production, they estimate about 300 permanent jobs, and most of those people will live in Winnemucca, about an hour away. Now, that town is gearing up for a boom in residents and a crunch in housing. I'll bring you that part of the story coming up tomorrow. And if you'd like to check out the other parts of this series, you can head to 2news.com. For now, Kristen and Ryan, back to you. Welcome back. 
As we've been reporting, the lithium mine at Thacker Pass is now under construction. And when it's fully in production, it'll host an estimated 300 permanent jobs on site. Like with most mines, the workers will be commuting from the nearest towns. Now, Thacker Pass is far north in Humboldt County, and there's no real housing option anywhere close by. So most of those workers and their families will be looking south to Winnemucca. And now the small town is gearing up for a population boom and a housing crunch. It's a midway point on I-80 if you're heading east to Elko or west to Reno. Home to just 8,000 people, Winnemucca, the city of paved streets as it calls itself, is a place whose streets most Nevadans have never set foot on. But for hundreds of people, that's about to change. It's going to have a big effect on Winnemucca. The multi-billion dollar lithium mine project, about an hour up the road at Thacker Pass, is hiring. More than 1,000 workers during construction and about 300 permanent jobs once it's operational. With just a 3% unemployment rate in Humboldt County, the workers will have to come from elsewhere, and all of them will need somewhere to live. When the mine's up and running, they're looking at probably 300 people as permanent full-time. We don't have that housing available right now. It's hard to get contractors to come here from Reno because they have all the work they need there, and why go away from home to work? So that's going to be, I think, our biggest challenge is finding contractors to build housing. But one man's challenge is another man's opportunity. For Dusty Ship, the influx of new Winnemuckans is welcome news. Interest rates have definitely taken a toll on sales, uh, but we're seeing tons of activity and people are looking and uh, we feel like it's the little bit of calm before the storm. We caught this crew building a row of new homes, hoping to have them ready in time. I think we're going to be in a can't build fast enough situation in the next six months here. I think it's going to go crazy. And so do city and county leaders who are building infrastructure, getting ready to welcome the newcomers. And we are very welcoming. Winnemucca is known as the friendliest town in, in um, the state of Nevada. Hi. I would say the boom makes me carefully optimistic. There's always a lot of growing pains, especially in smaller rural areas. Hopefully our, our builders and developers can keep up. Those builders will also have another big project on their hands. Lithium Americas is planning to build a transloading facility on the outskirts of town that will connect train and truck routes to ship materials. The mayor says that has caused some concern among locals who don't want hazardous chemicals trucked through town. But he says it's a little late for that with active gold mines nearby. When you consider we have cyanide trucks going through town every single day, you know, it's uh, not that big of a concern to us. And he says it'll be worth it, even if growth isn't appealing to everyone. In a town this little, a few hundred more families will be noticeable. In a small community, you've got a base of people who don't want to see us grow. They, they like us like we are, they like us being friendly with each other, knowing our neighbors, helping each other out. But the larger tax base will help with public services, and a bigger population will attract more amenities. A lot of the residents want a Home Depot here, or they want an Olive Garden here, and they won't come to a community that only has, you know, a little over 8,000 people. Growth is good change for community. You can't stay stagnant and uh, progress. Now, mining is already the main industry in Humboldt County and the reason why its median income is unusually high for a rural area. Now, the jobs with Lithium Americas are expected to be high paying as well and that means a better standard of living but also keeps housing prices higher. Add a lot more people and Winnemucca could end up dealing with many of the issues that Reno has seen from its rapid growth. Now this week, we've heard stories from a wide range of people who will be impacted by the mine at Thacker Pass. So if you've missed the rest of the series, you can check it all out at 2news.com.